text-to-voice synthesis provided by Vidnami. Once more, slowly, January 22, 2021 by Anna Von writes. Okay, pop quiz. Who defines, describes, limits, and charters all forms of corporations worldwide? This includes all the statutory and commercial trusts, s core c core b core PCs, LLCs, limiteds, cooperatives, foundations, cities, municipalities, states, tribes, non-profits, nations, provinces, commonwealths, monarchies, territories and the offices associated with all of them. The Roman Curia. This is where all this, stuff, comes from. All the labels and boxes and business structures and political units and subunits are dreamed up by Roman Curia, and this is the way it has been for close to 3,000 years they admit, and 4,100 years in fact. Now that you have those flying factoids in your consciousness, consider that under Roman civil law, the creator of something, whether a widget or a bad idea, is responsible for it. So the Curia is the creator and stands responsible for oversight of all these airy-fairy creations of theirs, but then, they own them, too, under Roman civil law and its codification, municipal law, which applies to non-clerical citizens of the Holy Roman Empire, and canon law which applies to the lawyers and priests. This entire system which gives order and hierarchy to the world comes from ancient Roman and later, the Roman Catholic Church. Starting about the year 1000 according to their double-adjusted calendars, we have seen a gradual and ever-increasing number of these trademarked and patented, business structures, proliferating. There are now dozens of such business structures to choose from, all created and promoted by the Roman Curia and their priests and lawyers. Whereas the headquarters of the Roman Curia as the government of the Holy Roman Empire? The city of Rome. What form of government does the city of Rome have? a municipal corporation backed by a municipal trust. So when the city of Rome forms franchises of itself to extend the reach of the Holy Roman Empire to other countries what form do those franchises take? They are all run as municipal corporations backed by municipal trusts. And how do you think the municipality of Washington, D.C. is set up? It is a municipal corporation franchise of the city of Rome backed by a municipal trust. It calls itself an independent international city-state, but how independent can it be when it is a franchise operation in the municipal government system? Chalk up another one of the gross deceits allowable under Roman civil law. Almost from the first these con artists have promoted the municipality of Washington, D.C., as first, our federal capital, and later, simply as the capital of this country, but it never was and still isn't. Now, given the foregoing do you see why the municipality of Washington, D.C., is and has always been, a foreign city-state on our shores? Operated by a foreign government, the Holy Roman Empire. It's not our capital, it's their capital. And like Rome, it is a plenary oligarchy. See Article 1 Section 8, Clause 17. They made Congress members that we elected into their government, subject to their Roman civil law. It wasn't a takeover. It was a co-option. Inevitably, the members of our puny provincial federal congresses were seduced by the wealth and power available to them when they acted as members of the Municipal United States Congress. During the Civil War these men were operating the municipal government, as, the government of, the, United States, and most people had forgotten or never knew that the actual name of our country at the national soil jurisdiction level is the United States. In international jurisdiction the name of this country is United States of America. Using the seduction of money and plenary power and this simple similar names deceit, they passed themselves off as the government of this country and never fired a shot. This was all fraud and usurpation, of course, and even under their own Roman civil law they took the risk of being discovered and blown back to where the fraud started. And that is exactly what has happened. The Brits, who were running a similar federal organization, the United States of America, as the territorial government, saw their chance to pull the same thing, and pass their organization off as the government of our country operating in international jurisdiction. This did not go unnoticed by other world governments, so the Holy See and the British monarchs had to pretend that our lawful government, disappeared, in the aftermath of the Civil War, and they were simply acting in a caretaking capacity on an emergency basis, until our return. The two foreign federal subcontractors quickly reorganized their operations to function as commercial corporations, and settled in to suck us dry. 
and that is what has gone on the last 160 years. But now the great fraud has been discovered and the long-lost Americans have come home and opened their state assemblies. The actual unincorporated federation of states doing business as the United States of America has roared back to life. And both sets of our erstwhile federal subcontractors are caught with their pants down and their hands in our cookie jar, trying to scrape out the last crumbs while pointing fingers at each other. The municipal government of Washington, D.C., operating as a municipal corporation and backed by a municipal trust funded by taxing our labor and our land, is exposed as a corrupt, criminal, venal organization. Upon our objection to their fraud they collapsed their municipal corporation like a traveling show and had their trustees HSBC and secondaries J.P. Morgan transfer our purloined trust money to China. That, and being allowed to counterfeit USD, is how China became so rich all of a sudden, and that is why Joe Biden says it's to our advantage for China to prosper. But he isn't speaking about us, the American states and people. He is talking about them, the traitorous municipal citizens of the United States, his cronies. You see, he's speaking to a different audience, and he is not acting as our president. He is acting as their president. The municipal United States government has got a lot of splaining to do to us and to the international community because they have been caught red handed in the epicenter of the biggest breach of trust and international fraud scheme in human history. So, does the Queen and Westminster have a lot of explaining to do? The British territorial subcontractors are doing their own shimmy shuffle dance. It's their job to protect us, and they have preyed upon us instead, worked hand in glove with the papist usurpers to rob us blind for six generations, and now. Well, Trump had sense enough to collapse the municipal corporation the papists chartered for the territorial government, but went right back through the revolving door, and is now proposing that the British territorial U.S. military should start all over from scratch and fight another whole war of independence at our expense and we, meanwhile, should accept another cuckoo bird substitution of their British-run, republic, in the place of our American federal republic. Oh, right, fool the stupid Americans again, and put the British government right back into position to act, as, our federal republic screw us silly again. Meanwhile the rest of the world is standing aghast and seeing what their purported governments organized as commercial governmental services providers are doing, to, them instead of, for, them. And they are getting the message, the HRE and Britain are the source of all this rot. Together our purported allies have betrayed, used, abused, and defrauded the American states and people, and they are still trying to pretend that they, represent, us and are still claiming to have a right to access our credit and still trying to work name games and substitution schemes on us, even years after our own American government woke up and called them on the carpet for what they've done to us and the rest of the world. It's not going to work this time. Too many people know what has gone on here. Joe Biden has no contract. The Holy Roman Empire is utterly disgraced. The municipal corporations are forfeit. The Brits have one ace and his name is Donald Trump, but they are not going to pull another round of cuckoo bird with us and take over our federal republic the same way they substituted their state of state organizations for ours. And we are not going to accept any second declaration of independence and fight another war for what we have already won. It is time for the entire world to wake up and look at what has gone on here and who is responsible for it. These are the actions of crime syndicates, not governments. This isn't political. This isn't about race or religion. This is plain old garden variety fraud and crime pursued for the sake of unjust enrichment. We, the actual American government, condemn all these criminal and predatory fraud schemes which have been carried out against the American states and people in gross breach of trust and criminal breach of commercial contract. We call upon the Pope to surrender all municipal and territorial corporations formed via the abuse of our delegated powers to us, for our administration under our public law, and upon the Queen and Westminster to straighten up and fulfill their contract with no further attempts at guile. We also call for the return of our gold transported offshore by the U.S. Navy for safekeeping, the return of all American legacy trusts, and the return of all American land which has been subjected under the real estate entitlement system and the false presumption of British custodial interest.
let the entire world know and hear what has gone on here, and may all countries draw together in righteous indignation that these commercial corporations have been allowed to function, as, governments under color of law, and in joint and universal condemnation of the Holy Roman Empire's fraud and enslavement rackets, and the British government's guile, dishonesty, treachery, and theft of American property assets in breach of trust. If we let this kind of thing go on anywhere in the world and fail to recognize it and stump it out as the crime that it is, every country is imperiled and every national government is at risk. So long as we, the people of this world, tolerate the ancient evils of deceit and enslavement promoted by the Holy Roman Empire's use of the Roman civil law, the only peace will be established by criminal oppression and there will be no safety for anyone at all. We must all deal with it and deal with it now. We cannot possibly succeed and save our planet with ravening wolves running wild and unchallenged in our midst. The Holy Roman Empire and Britain must be dealt with by all of us. And all these run amok commercial corporations must also be addressed and subjected to the public law in each country, and not allowed to operate as interlocking trust directorates, monopolies or agencies of government.